RNIB. Opening up creative culture. Describing 2D objects. Louise Fryer. Louise sits at a kitchen table, a photo on a laptop in front of her. So how do you approach audio describing a two-dimensional image? This is a black and white photograph from an exhibition of photos by a black photographer called Van Lee Burke. And I was asked to describe 20 selected images. And this was the one I started with. I found it really charming. And the kind of things that you want to convey is what's its appeal? Why is it visually so appealing? The thing about it is that you could talk about this photograph for an endless amount of time. Each time you look at it, you see something new, but in an audio description, you have to make it limited. So how long do people want to be in a gallery? 40, 45 minutes, which gives you two minutes a photo max. What you need to do to start with is to give a summary of what's in front of us. And in this case, the title does that for us. It's called Hugh in his Sunday best. And we need just a little bit more details. So who is Hugh? How old is Hugh? Where is Hugh? And if you can sum that up in a single sentence, then it gives people a framework that you can then fill in with more detail. So here we have a little boy, age six or seven, standing on a street corner in his Sunday best. And then you can go into more detail describing exactly what he's wearing. And then the little subtle details are what make all the difference. So here, what I was really struck by were his trousers and the way that they really crumple up as they reach his shoes. And in contrast to his very smart, slightly too big suit, his shoes themselves are rather scuffed. So we've got a really nice contrast in detail. So we have the very roughened surface of the road underneath him. The curb is chipped, it's crumbled, and the brickwork of the buildings behind him a very, it's very dirty and not necessarily a great part of town. And as you're thinking about that process, your eye is being led into the structure of the photograph. And you have to ask yourself, why is this photo on display? Why should Van Lee Burke be considered a remarkable photographer? And not only is it his subject matter, it's also the way he's framed the shot. So I'm interested in this zigzag angle that frames the little boy in the center. I like the fact that he's on his own, he's entirely alone. And there's almost a suggestion of a blind alley here between these brick walls that are very blank. And even the house in the front on this side, where you might expect to see some sign of life, you've got the shut front door, you've got the windows slightly curtained, there's no view out of this window in the side wall. So I wanted to convey the sense of this little child in complete isolation within an urban environment. And I wanted, to, I wanted people to, um, to question what exactly he was doing there. And I was interested too in his state of mind. So he looks quite composed, quite sober faced, quite earnest for a little child. So it's not a photo with a sense of fun, but it's certainly a photo that draws you in. You want to know more about him. And a lot of that comes through his physical appearance. There's a nice little comic thing here whereby he's got his hand tucked into his trousers. It's a very childish movement, maybe scratching an itch. It made me think that probably he doesn't wear that suit very often and it's a little uncomfortable and he'd be much happier kicking around in jeans. So conveying those little details give your description a little bit of humor so when you've got all those elements, the difficult thing is putting them together and putting them together in a logical structure, in an interesting structure, and something that within two minutes can encapsulate all those thought processes that I've gone through in terms of creating the description. Another photo titled Cipher Sound, Hansworth Park. This was one of the most difficult photos for me to describe in the whole collection because one of the things you need to know is what's it showing? and it's not a situation I'm very familiar with. It was filmed at the Hansworth Carnival. And I could tell that there were five young guys in the photo and that they were standing around some kind of sound system, but that was about as far as my knowledge went. So I knew that they were probably in the open air, but what kind of structure 
is behind them. It looks a little bit like the back of a lorry, maybe it's some kind of booze, but unless you've got the correct terminology, it's really difficult to convey what's in the background. So I work with various sound engineers and I sought their opinion as to what they thought was going on, what kind of kit they thought this was. In the end, we decided this was probably some kind of cabinet that all this kit was stacked on top of. And only once you've got those basic bits of information can you then start to put it all together. And what I thought was interesting about this picture is no one's performing, it's not a posed shot. They're in the middle of doing something. And usually the guy with the mic is the most important guy in a, in a band or whatever kind of performance. But everyone else isn't looking at him, they're looking at this guy over here who seems to be operating the kit, setting up the kit, not quite sure what he's doing. So I'm interested in conveying that. I'm also interested in conveying what they look like, so things like their age, what they're wearing. Again, probably some kind of terminology problems. So what kind of hats are they? Rasta hat sprang to mind, but does that mean the right kind of thing? Do you actually want to describe the shape of the hat? Um, this guy's got his dreadlocks, which I think is really interesting. The other guys don't. Are they slightly less cool than him? What's the relative power structure? So you've got all these different things that you're trying to find some kind of balance and some way of taking people through to make it functional. So people with some sight can understand and make sense of the blurred or patchy image that they have in front of them. But you want to give it some kind of narrative so people can find a sensible way through what you're describing and you also want to leave them with a few questions i have hundreds of questions about this particular photograph so i'm not going to come down and say it's definitely this this and this but if you make it too ambivalent then people are just lost they don't know really what they're looking at or why they should be interested so what i'm trying to do when i create a description is to provide more answers than raising more questions to give something that people can then play with in their imagination, take something from, give their own interpretation to, but with enough of a solid basis that if they have some sight, they can use that sight as effectively as possible. Describing 2D objects. Evoke, with the same photo in front of him. When I first saw this image, the first thing that I asked myself before I started to describe it is how could I connect to it? Because essentially, before you can describe an image, you need to connect to it, you need pathways into that world. Whether that's, you know, sitting there deciphering the image, analysing the image, or, you know, reading up about the image, finding out the backstories, anything, that going, anything that's going on in the image. Get to understand and get to know what's taking place in the image. Any conversation you have with someone, you're telling them about something, you're telling them the who's, the what's, the where's, the when's, the why's, and the how's. And, you know, essentially, the person that's listening builds up that story in their head, even though they wasn't there, they can generate the idea of what took place there and they build up the image. So those are the questions that I started with. And the more I ask those questions, I mean, I'd ask those questions three or four times even, you know what I mean? I might say, who's in the image? Who's this guy? What's his relation to this guy? You know what I mean? And the more you ask the questions, the more information comes out of the image, the more you've got to talk about, the more you've got to describe. And then you, what you find is you start to build um, a story and that story then brings more clarity. Uh, through the process. So it, like when I, when I first wrote it, how I connected to it, one of the things I connected to was the music. And uh, I wanted to kind of, I wanted to embody that music and put it into the piece. So I started off with like a, a bum, 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 bum sound because that's the kind of music that I play. It's very uplifting, you know, the party feel. And I wanted that to come out through the description. So in the first part of the poem, you hear me flowing the words quite nicely, um, using words that rhyme because this is what they do when they're playing in music and when the MC's on the mic is rhyming and so on and so forth. In the second part of the piece, it's more about the actual impact that the Rastafarian community, because this is what the image is about, it's more about the impact of what the Rastafarian community had on the community. And uh, so you get the backstory. So even though I describe the image in a short caption, I'm also giving you the backstory, which gives you the bigger picture, because essentially when you look at a picture, you're looking for you're looking at the whole picture, you want to take in the whole picture and you connect to that picture and the way to connect to that picture is tell the story. RNIB, supporting blind and partially sighted people. 
logos for Arts Council England, Punch Records, Imagineer Productions and Ironbridge Gorge Museum Trust.